Time intelligence. Time intelligence is a way of being able to go in and associate a calendar with these different graphs and KPIs that you're looking at. For example, you can set up a filter so that a user can come through and say they're looking at a graph and it comes through and it shows different functions, you know, uh, finance or whatever it is we're looking at in here. We can come through and we can select on a menu item over here in the filter and say same period last month, or I'm sorry, just last month or same period last year or yesterday or period uh, uh, two months ago, etc. And what they will do is they're going to select this filter and select some type of English text or textual content that you select yesterday or whatever it is you label this and when they click on it that filter is going to be applied over into whatever it is the filter is connected to so this time intelligence filter is going to be connected into say a chart or a scorecard or whatever so then the update will automatically happen you'll select the same period last year and say we're in the third quarter financially of uh, 2013 and it'll go over to the third quarter of 2012 this is a very handy little thing Time intelligence is actually set up over in the data source, and one of the tabs in the data source is going to be labeled time, uh, time intelligence, I think it actually is. And you'll go through there, and the first thing you're going to set up is you're going to tell the connection where the calendar is. So you'll navigate into the calendar. You have to understand, if we look at multidimensional data, or even tabular data, we have multiple calendars depending on the industry. I think retail had... Gosh, you'd think I'd remember, wouldn't you? But I think retail had 13 calendars that they worked with, the promotion calendar and the fiscal calendar and on and on and on and on. So if you, have, if you think about it, if you have a fiscal calendar that starts, say, July 1st, and then we have a standard calendar, the Gregorian calendar that starts uh, January 1st, what we have to do is tell the connection what calendar we want to use. And so now we'll navigate into, say, analysis services, into the cube, and if you have multiple calendars, you'll say, I want to use that one. By the way, set yourself up a different connection, different data source for every different calendar that you want. Bunky. All right, so you go in and you set that on up. Now you've got it. You navigate in and say, this is the calendar I want to use. Step one. Step through, uh, two, you come in and you say what the first day is of that calendar. So let's say our fiscal calendar starts July 1st. You'll click, 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 and navigate on through and expand, expand, expand until you find July 1st, and you'll click on that, and that will set up July 1st as day one. And then you'll come over and you'll say what the granularity is. We call that the hierarchical level. Boy, do we use weird words? Okay, so we come through there and we say the hierarchical level, and you'll say it's day, right? or it could be month or minute or whatever. You say the hierarchical level as you roll up, roll down, you know, year, uh, you know, uh, uh, semester, quarter, pop, 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 drops on down like that. All right, so you come through and say what the level is of granularity that you want to use, and you want to get as granular as you can. Next, you drop on down and you set the reference date so that we say we know that January, or I'm sorry, July 1st, say, is the first day of the fiscal year. You set up what that is in the calendar year. So the first day of the calendar year, say, is January 1st. Click, click, click. Now we've got that in reference. Just think about it. If I'm on January 1st and I want to look at finances and January 1st is the first day in the first month of my calendar year and I want to look at last month, so now I go last month in my calendar year is, let's see, January back, let's see, da 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 da, -da. Ho, 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 Christmas, got it, December, so I roll on back, but in my fiscal year, July 1st, that would be June. Got it? So you roll back, and that's what we're tying together so that the uh, time connection, time intelligence, knows how to do this. And then the next thing you do is you come through and you map out these uh, time member associations because when we create these different uh, cubes in the different calendars, we don't have to name them following any pat known pattern. We could call it bananas, grapes, and cement blocks rather than year, month, day, etc. You know, whatever you want to do. So we can come through and set that, but we have to tell analysis services, or if we're doing flat, we have to tell the SQL connection or whatever it is we're doing, that when we say, for example, uh, calendar year, we mean year, and we say calendar quarter, we mean quarter, bah, 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 as you come through there. As a matter of fact, if you actually go through and do the labs, 
when you come through and you're going to select uh, date, and it's going to say, when we say date, it really means day. Right? So we have that little mismatch in there. And that will set up your time intelligence calculation. Bear with me a second. Let's make sure I got everything you wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let me pull up this uh, magic little bing translation down here. And this will show you some of the code that you can enter. So when you're in here now, you set up your data connection, and then you're going over and actually creating the data filter. You'll come in and create the data filter, and you'll enter such as day minus one, and then you'll go over and you'll set up, they'll say, uh, I want the menu selection when the user uses that to say yesterday. So now when they click on yesterday, it's really day minus one. So you set all these up, day minus one, you know, um, uh, day colon, day minus nine, which uh, will come down and give you a 10-day range in here. And you set all these up in your uh, list that you want the user to be able to select. And then you'll just go over and click Preview. And if you see MDX, if you see code coming back in there, then it worked. If it comes back and goes, I couldn't find anything or I have no idea of what you're doing, you have something wrong. Normally, when that happens, what you have wrong is you set up something uh, over in the connection. So you got to go back over and test that connection and go back and forth. All right, so that's the way you figure those on out. Um, uh, let's see, is there anything else fascinating in here that I want to cover? No, 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 on and on and on. All right, so now you're going to go in and I'm going to give you this little demonstration of configuring time intelligence, which you will watch closely. And then you go in and do the step-by-step.